The last thing I want to demonstrate here is how to do a nonlinear fit. And uh, let's just use some of the, the data that uh, we uh, uh, loaded before. So uh, read R and then read CSV. And then we should go into the data directory, the first data set, and I think that's good. Yeah. So as before, always try to plot your data if possible. And measurements to, to write this in a proper way. What we have here is some kind of uh, oscillation that seems to be decaying over time. And it would be nice to be able to figure out the exact parameters of this uh, oscillation. So let's see what we can do there. Um, and for, for that, we should be able to use this NLS method, the nonlinear least squares. And again, it takes a formula and some data. Um, do, 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 do. I need to, to read a bit here on how to actually use it. Um, and often there is a, a set of, uh, of examples uh, down here. So, yes. Here we have an example of, of how to uh, to call it, and we'll just adjust accordingly. So here it tries to explain the density. We'll change that to y. And here we have the equation that should be set up here. And that will be something on the order of um, a sine wave of a frequency multiplied with uh, x plus uh, coefficient a and a different coefficient b multiplied cosine the same frequency of x multiplied with some kind of decaying exponential function so minus then we have a parameter c it should be a multiplication there that and then I think we are more or less in, in place. Data set should be these uh, measurements. That's what they were called. And finally, I should provide a list of all the uh, parameters I, and their initial values. And I'm just guessing on, on some values here. I don't know what it is, and I'll try to omit uh, the last value here. Let's see. Okay, now it tells me that I have what is known as singular gradient matrix of these uh, values, and that most likely means that it is having a, a hard time figuring out what is uh, going on here. Um, so what does this look? One oscillation it takes Apparently close to one unit here, so the frequency should be close to six. Ah, uh, oh, I forgot to say multiply with x here. So now it actually found uh, a fit um, that uh, hopefully matches uh, somehow here. So let's see if we are able to to plot it. Um, put it up here. And how to do that uh, model. And I'll try to make a, a data set here consisting of x values from the range um, from, yeah, from minus 2 to 10, like that. And I want to specify quite many steps. And I can say by here. Let's 
So if I understand correctly, then I have this uh, model down here. Those 1201 observations that are just different values of, of x. That's fine. And I can use uh, mutate on this one to calculate the, the y values. And here you can use uh, the model from up here. Well, then specify okay, a should be 0 0.4. B should be 0.993, the frequency should be 0.3961, like this, and finally C should be, uh, no, uh, the frequency should be, uh, I messed up these uh, values. That should be 4.1194. And these are most likely weighing more uh, decimals than, than needed. But what I have now is inside my model, I have both the X and Y values. And I can hopefully plot this uh, here using a jump line. And then say um, data should be the model. And the color should be red just to make it easier to see what is what. And now we can see that the actual model and the um, measurement data that we used to fit the model to um, coincide very nicely. So now we have succeeded making this uh, nonlinear fit. And again, of course, we can uh, um, add more detailed information to the, to the axis. And the good thing here is that we can actually reuse it if, if we had uh, inserted that uh, before. We can also see if we are able to uh, gain additional information here by calling this uh, summary function. And more or less the same as, as we got from the uh, linear model, we gain in insight into how important the, the different uh, parameters are considered to be inside uh, this model. And they all found to be very important. We have p-values close to uh, 10 to the minus 16, or the um, round off error in the computer. So uh, in this case, they all seem to, to be important. And we can also see that the uh, the function actually, or the model, field model, actually follows the data very well. Good. So now you have seen how you can load data into R, fit a nonlinear model, and uh, also plot it afterwards.